already. Why can't I just use another spell? Great. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to this Friday stream of a little something that I am currently calling Crawl Royale. Uh, I am here with James Durham, Christian Doyle, and Mark on Tech. Bless him. And we are going to be doing a little, a little goofy fun thing just for fun uh, to keep things going. Apparently, we've right now currently got streams going every day of the week to make sure that everything is happening and we can keep you all entertained. Uh, so how are we all doing today, kids? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Good. Aside from the gigantic tech hiccup, we're, we're doing pretty good. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, that was fun and exciting, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Use those words. I, yeah, I have not used the Skype application in a few years, and it was very angry that I was trying to get back in good with it, apparently. Oh, yeah. Oh god. Oh no. What Somebody's is that sound? Some... Uh don't look at me. I didn't do it. I'm just gonna put that out there. We all oh. Is everybody still here? Are we having a few more technical difficulties? I I'm still here. Okay. You're here. You're still here. That's great. Presumably we're still live, which You're you love here. to see. I'm still here. Well, great. I guess, are you two ready to get underway? Yeah. Uh, I, I think. Sure. We get up. Have to be. Sounds good. All of the time that has been lost. All right. So you see before you looking, you know, through the eyes of somebody else, not currently the characters that you are, what looks to be a very large mirror set around a stadium so that much like a movie theater, everybody, everybody can watch this singular large surface. And on it, there is a roughly middle-aged, well-done-up, attractive male, probably you'd place as a half-elf. And they sit down in this large, lavish red chair, look towards the uh, camera to use non high fantasy parlance and put forth this. Ladies and gentlemen, and all other attendants, allow me, Marth Wasson, your esteemed game master for the last 73 years, to introduce you to the 213th annual Crawl Royale. For anyone new to our little tournament or simply in need of a refresher, please allow me to explain the game that we have in store for you today. Twenty teams of two adventurers have been selected from across the archipelago to compete for your enjoyment. Over the next few days, they will be stripped of all equipment, tossed into this year's tournament grounds, a once dreamy little city called Rockbridge, somehow left deserted by some terrible catastrophe years ago. It's all very exciting, isn't it? The contestants must fight tooth and nail against one another and their environment to get to the center of Rockbridge to the keep there to find a portal out. The first two contestants to make it through the win. The prize, you ask? 3,000 platinum pieces and their freedom, of course. Not big, I know, I know, but we can't just ask people to risk their lives for the sake of a small sack of gold now, can we? Now, after we see our teams, get to those spatially unlocked betting booths and see what you can muster for your favorite duo. And don't forget, you can always spend your cold, hard cash to give a boon or setback as you see fit. Throw in enough monkey wrenches and even our masterful Illithid stats master may be unable to keep up. Now sit back, relax, and let's take a look at our competitors. This is the point at which our heroes become unaware, unable to make out any further words from the game master. So they are ushered from their waiting room by armed guards into a dressing room. They are bathed, groomed, and medically checked to see that they are at peak performance. So can I get the two of you to describe the characters you will be playing for this little buckle? Ah, uh, uh, James, go ahead. Uh, I'll let you go ahead. Okay, I guess I can do that. Um, I, I'm still recovering most of my character. Oh. I, lo I lost it during the restart here a few minutes back. 
Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm uh, playing a human. Uh, Brother Anahe. Mick Anahe. Mm. Uh, rather average looking person. Very average. Love to see Very average and nondescript. Nothing remarkable about him. You could easily lose him in a crowd. That's a good skill to have sometimes. Well, probably the most and, and an apt description of 80% of the characters you play. I, last uh, last character I played in the game that I ran for James, he was Conan the Barbarian, so that is my true. evidence is skewed. That's why I put it in the 80% range as opposed to the 90% range. Right, of course, of course. Because we never give him a chance to play, because we make him run every time. It's so he only has, he's only really got to play like four characters around me, and they're all generally nondescript except for Bronan. Yeah, Bronan is very, very... Yeah. Descript. Right. Descript. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Consistently oiled. Yeah, got that 80s action hero look going on. Mm -hmm. oh, the opposite of Bronan with this one. Beautiful. Well, uh, if you don't have anything to add, Christian, if you'd like to go on. Uh, my character is uh, <clears throat> uh, human. Tall, lanky, Stringy beard, stringy hair, L looks maybe 30-ish. Mm. Not wearing much anything right now, I guess, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, right now you're being uh, scrubbed, scrubbed by various attendants, attendants and checked by a handful of doctors. So, currently wearing literally nothing. But what are you going to do? I guess shiver slightly. Yeah. After about an hour of this and being handed loose-fitting tan tunics, gray trousers, and black leather boots, you are issued to yet another room. There is a figure, a man, seemingly around 80, scrawny and hunched over, but quite possibly much older, as made evident by the three-foot, pointed, wide-brimmed hats lazily upon their head. After the guards ushering you through leave the room, the figure simply smiles at you behind his white beyond his white, scraggly beard and his yellow, crooked teeth, and says, We have three minutes before I have to send you, so make yourselves comfortable. Oh, is there a place to sit? There's a few chairs over there under the tarp. I'll go sit. I will do likewise. So... What do you think of your chances? I know you haven't seen the other contestants, but, uh... Anything. You both look kind of... vague. And you should... I've, I've been doing this for a fair few years, and personally, I find it's the ones who look unimpressive that are, in theory, they're always gonna come out of left field and impress you. So, do you find yourselves to be that sort of people, or... like a solid 7 out of 20th place sort of people? Better than average. Eh. A lot of people die in the front end, usually. As you're all... Oh, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but you will be dropped with another team very close by. So, uh, be aware. Maybe see if you can find something. Uh, and then dash their skulls in or run away. I It's none of my business, really. Yeah, I'm sure you don't tell that to everybody. Oh, I do. I'm just not supposed to. However, you know, being a very fancy wizard with a very fancy hat, this entire thing is lined with lead. Uh, I would have lead poisoning if it was not for all of the very, very skilled uh, game-running doctors we have. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have to send you in. Please step into the portal. And they motion to this large stone ring that they have been standing in front of, and it bursts with blue energy, almost feeling like it starts to suck you in. So, please. Come again? I'll step into it. Me too. Go in. You are both blinded by the same blue fading into white until you find yourselves 
pretty much. And admittedly, I didn't set up tokens for you, but I set up something vaguely similar. Uh, you find yourselves over next to what seems to be some sort of logging house or possibly uh, just, just a house in the woods with a lot of clear cutting relatively nearby. And you notice, notice that there seems to be another pair of people, one most likely a dwarf and another seeming to be a dark elf type on the opposite side of the house from you. Currently, it, it looks like only one, one of you, uh, Christian, what, what is, is your character's, character's name? name? I don't believe I ever got it. No, I don't think you got any of our names. Uh, uh, Barkley Knox. Knox. Barkley Knox. Uh, Barkley, Barkley can currently, currently see, see the two of these, these other people, people but Brother, Brother Anna 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 cannot. cannot. And, and it, it does, does look to be a young, young dwarf who I have, have here somewhere, somewhere as well. well. Their, Their name, name uh, is, of course, course Mr. Mr. Chewy, Chewy Items. items. Uh, uh, it's it's Anahe. Mick Anahe. Mick Anahe. Very, very good. Oh, so, excuse me. I, you, you know, know terribly, terribly to make such, such a mistake. So, so you, you find, find yourselves currently opposite this, this house, uh, this probably logging house, based, based on, on the fact, fact that there is currently, you know, you know felled felled trees bundled, bundled nearby. You can, you can see, see over relatively south of the actual, of the actual house, house itself, itself, there seems, there seems to be an actual large, large log nearby, nearby. Uh, as, well as, as well as these two other figures. figures. Who you, you can probably, probably assume, assume given there are two of them, them and they look like stout adventuring types. Other contestants on the opposite side of this house. So, you can either, can either start acting, or if you, you want to get right into combat type, type things, we can run initiative. I would, I would like, like to head to the apps. apps. Great. Great. You, you are, are relatively right, right, right behind, behind him silently. Silently. Great. Uh, would, you would you like, like to go, go unnoticed, unnoticed or, or sort, sort of, of not, not really give anything I do is unnoticed. <laughs> Great. Uh, can I get, can the, I get two the two of you to make stealth checks? checks? All right. And I believe that for your two opponents, I should have the things that I set up. Because, because, because the, the first, fun, funnily, funnily enough, enough, a little peek behind the curtain. The curtain. Uh, this, this, this is the first time, time that I have run something online using one of these programs. programs. And it'll be, it'll be all right. All right. Got a lot so it's to... okay for me to ask how to roll the die? Yes. Uh, assuming you don't have your character stuff uh, put on your character sheet in the game, which is totally fine. Yeah, yeah you I... type slash roll space one letter D 20. And then you can also put a space... Uh, a plus and a space for your well, modifier. Could you, could you go back to the beginning of that again? Yeah. Uh, you type slash roll space 1d20. I have typed it with a period in front into the chat so that you can see what you are supposed to type in. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, so good brother Anahe. Okay. I think I got a win. Right. You win. Uh, you got a four. Uh, is your modifier plus ten? Yes. Great. Then uh, we're gonna take the first one. You got a fourteen, which will actually be enough to not be noticed. Funnily enough, and Christian rolled a natural twenty, which is uh, super ding dang good. I am the knight. So you two are both able to slip into. And you both have control of your tokens. Uh, I will find some images in the interim as you're deciding to do things so that we can differentiate them. Uh, but your two tokens, uh, and by extent you, have entered the house. And you can see roughly this 15 by probably 20 deep entering room. Uh, sort of like a living room situation. There is a hearth on the far wall as well as what looks to be a table, a few shelves, and a chest over in the corner. So, assuming you would like to look for things, or just yeah. hide out, do as you will. 
Well, I, I'm assuming there's some kind of obvious kitchen. Uh, food preparation area? Yes, actually. Uh, assuming that you came in through the door, on your left-hand side would be to the north. So in the south west corner over here, which I'm currently pinging, uh, you can see a little kitchenette type of situation, as well as a wall dividing it and a door right around here, that wall being on the south, the dividing wall. I'm looking for a knife in the kitchen, like a kitchen knife, in fact. Absolutely. Uh, before we make you roll for such things, Christian, uh, what would you like to do in this hizzity house? I'm going to very intently watch him go through the kitchen. <laughs> I, I do like that. Uh, can I get both of you to roll investigation checks? Yes, I think I can do that, too. Great. Thank you. Pardon my neck. I had to resituate. Going in here. All right. You have rolled uh, a 12 and a 13. Yes. So you are able to, uh, James, you are able to find actually some, they look a little bit old, but they are oh. relatively functional kitchen knives. Uh, their edge is off, they're a little bit corroded, but you can still cut through the meat of a person with them. So and mine will come out to an 18 after everything. Oh, very good. Uh, so you find a pair of functional kitchen knives. Uh, and Christian, you find two things of note. Uh, as he's, you know, looking and pouring through the kitchenette sort of situation, you kick over uh, and just start to pour a little bit more because he seems to be doing a good enough job himself. And you see, looking back over the door that you were entering from, there seems to be an old short bow in relatively good condition as well as a quiver of 20 arrows. And you can tell from a little hole inside of that chest, because it looks like this place has been abandoned for at least a handful of decades. Uh, you can see what looks to be wood carving tools, something like that. All right. I uh, tap Mr. Mick on hay. On, on the shoulder and gesture up to the door where the bow is hanging. That's about perfect. And then I, I go over and take a look at the tools more closely. It does look like probably a set of wood carving tools. And while you may or may not be actually particularly well trained in such things, uh, you know that you could use this to recreate some symbols or some focuses that would be needed for these sort of actions that your characters would like to take in a relatively simple manner. I'm going to hand uh, him one of my knives because he shouldn't be unarmed. <clears throat> I hold up my hand. Here, take that. Uh, you don't need it? All right. Okay. Thank you. Though. Yeah. So to give you a brief rundown, you have found a short bow, 20 arrows, two kitchen knives that will function as daggers and a wood carver's set, as well as some relatively nice, but soft wood. And it is about this point that you hear from the other side of the house, not the side that you came in from the opposite end of that dividing wall right beneath you. Uh -oh. What sounds to be a door opening, just a moment, and slamming shut. And it seems you would be able to guess that there are probably the other two people, given, you know, the two of them are chatting to one another a little bit, uh, rummaging through things, probably a little bit frustrated about what they are finding. Well, part of this contest involves killing the other guy, so... Uh... I think that's what we need to do. I look over him and okay. Let's try and do this sneaky like. All right. Okay. Unless you would like to wait and you want to uh, start this whole situation 
while they are still in that back room. You have a few options. You can either go through the door leading from inside this part of the house to the other side, or you can go back outside and try to wheel around to whatever back door they came in. Totally up to you. And also you can wait, see if there are some other situations. But these are what seem obvious to you. Well, they're going to come through that door. Most likely. I say we just set up to bushwhack them when they come through the door. Uh, telling, taking a brief, you know, spot at the hinge since you're considering this, you can tell that that door probably swings open on the left-hand side. So you could hide behind the door, maybe hide on top of the kitchenette. <laughs> you oh, I'm thinking about just it. having that arrow drawn back and I'm going to just let the guy have it as soon as he opens the door. Right. Uh, sounds good. I walk, over, I walk over to the door and prepare to be behind it. Great. Absolutely. Well, after a brief moment, situate the webcam that is super frail. And I look uh, over at McConaughey as if to say, please don't shoot me. <laughs> you get a real soft look in your eyes. Everything seems situated. Uh, and after a brief moment, you can both take a hide or excuse me, stealth action with advantage this time because you have a lot of time to sort of situate yourselves since you are waiting for them to enter this part of the house. Here we go. Either going to be that one or the same exact result. Or the same result. It looks like you got a... Oh, nice. I have a feeling I'm going to take that one. Probably, but who knows? Could be better. Nope. All right. So you're holding on to that 18 plus a lot. Yep. Uh, and I will roll perception for our people over here. That one is a 14 at best, so the more lithe, elven-looking one of the two seems to not pay any attention. And Mr. Chewy Fightums over here is going to also roll a 14 at best. Uh, they don't have advantage leaving it there by default and just favoring the left-hand side. For y'all, make sure you know that I'm not cheating. Not gotcha. that it would matter because I'm in charge. Uh, so the two of them... Uh, excuse me. Control-Z. Didn't mean to draw that. The two of them seem to push in. The short, stout, more dwarven-looking type pushing for first... And oh, the, he, he's going to get it. Yeah, the live, uh, looking closer now that you can get a proper read on the complexion, seemingly a sort of dark elf uh, pushing just behind them. And both of you will get a surprise round, so if you would like to make attacks with advantage, for uh, or an attack with advantage, uh, and your Perhaps. whole situation, James, and whatever you would like to do, Christian, because you have the ability to do so. You can also stay hidden. All right, attack with advantage. Click the button. Let's see. Yep. see. Right. So they're going to be at 21. Uh, 20, I think I'll take the... Yeah, I mean, you might as well at this point. So that is going to be a solid hit. So if you would like to roll, excuse me. Yes, I would. I would uh, like to point out that uh, because I have the assassinate skill, any creature that I surprise Crazy, crazy. Uh, so uh, that's a critical hit. will be a critical hit, and it is yes. all sneak. Beautiful. You, uh, you are this one, James. If you would like to position yourself wherever in this room you would like. Okay. I, I put Christian behind the door. Right. 
a little more space. Great. Okay. that because uh, you are also correct because the way I tend to house rule that sort of situation is on crits in 5th edition usually you don't also double your modifier but I like to do that anyway because getting a crit and then rolling a bunch of ones means you did oh uh, like two bonus damage and that's not exciting so you are going to do I believe that should be 36 damage to the stout dwarven looking uh, personage 36 damage that is an assassination attempt Yes, that is an assassination. Is there anything extra I have to worry about assassination attempts, or is it just big kid damage? That's just big kid damage. All right. So going here, that will be... Uh, you don't quite finish them off, but you can tell that shot was incredibly well-placed. And if they were not a hardened, adventuring type of person, uh, there would not be a dwarf. There would be a fine red mist in the dwarf's place. That's okay. Yeah. So, uh, that will be... Now that I know unequivocally that that character is not a wizard... That character is not a wizard, uh, but the character that just got shot is in horrid condition, and he looks to be holding on to, now that you can both get a closer look, kind of carpenter's hammer. Look, it, it might be a carpenter's hammer, it might be a mini mall, uh... What it is for sure is on fire because burning hands is now happening. Beautiful. So is that a saving throw type of attack that I have to I for? don't know. It was all uh, on my sheet thing, which is now somewhere in the, the cloud, I guess they call it. You hate to see that. All right. Uh, so I will have to make a... Dexterity saving throw in Correct. order to resist all of this damage. So is a 13... But they, they are unaware of my presence, so they don't get that. I will give you disadvantage for the fact that they are unaware of your presence. So they are going to get a 12. Uh, and knowing that we are currently, you know, parting the curtain, fifth level characters, your casting stat is going to be better than plus two modifier. Mm -hmm. So they're going to... Go up in flames, and you get to do full, but not uh, extra damage. Let's see Excellent. how this goes. How do I, what do I roll for that? It's uh, 3d6. 3d6. Hey, Christian. Yeah? You have managed to do the exact amount of damage left over after that beautiful arrow shot into the sternum. Uh, <laughs> this dwarven character completely falls over, tumbles into the kitchenette, spreads burning ash and char all over it. And the other all one, the and the other one is on is fire. Is on fire. So they are also going to take the thirteen damage. Uh, this one is unconscious, so I'll just roll that. I'll just put that zero in hit points, and I will open. Now, do this I one. get my... Do I, oh, no, I don't think so. Never mind. So, uh, you do not. My first... Thank you, because I didn't need to finish that sentence. You You're knew good. what I wanted. I knew what you wanted. We played together enough, and mm -hmm. I have also wondered that enough. Uh, so you well, also get a warlock. solid amount of burning. The, the same brown tunic, or the same tan tunic that you were both issued before getting dropped in here starts to go up in flames, and they rip it off. And then, of course, you know... It's that sort of, like, very edgy, very spicy, dark elf physique where if this was, you know, like a 90s fantasy novel cover oil painting, this would be a little twitipating. But the person is currently burning alive, and that's not comfortable. So, no. now we're all going to roll for initiative. Okay. Okay. Now that you have uh, already completely beefed one of my two also fifth level characters... And that's a D20 in this system, right? Correct. D20 plus your uh, your dexterity modifier. 
Which is make my, my dexterity modifier in this case. I have one feet that helps out with that initiative. Oh, I have alert. An extra plus five. Alert. I almost took that. Alert's real good. I played with it before. And mine is a 19 with the modifier. Beautiful. Fine. Great. So I'll figure out that turn order later after I give you proper tokens. Uh, so the first one going next is going to be James. You see this silly, silly dark elf just hanging out in this little back room, looking a little spooked and a little on fire. Now, this is a, a case where my assassinate does come into play. I have advantage on attack rolls against a creature who hasn't taken a turn in a combat yet. They've not taken their turn yet, so you get that advantage yet again, even though they know where you are. So we're either going to have a 21 which hit, or a 15, and I'll take the 21. Great. You connect, do your damage. Uh, and since you have advantage, you also get that sweet saccharine bonus sneak attack damage. That's right. Make sure I'm getting this damage right before I roll it. Oh, that is a solid hit. Any uh, additional modifier shenanigans that needs to be taken into account before that? Nope, that is going to do it for the uh, extra damage. You get a fantastic shot. Not quite as well placed because you had to sort of resituate from dwarf height to elf height, which is, you know, a little different. Um, but you can tell with that solid, solid, probably into the lower abdomen, whether you pierced a lung or just scraped some internal organs is up for debate, but it clearly was not comfortable. And then we're going to go down to Christian for the next initiative slot. <laughs> Unless you would like to spend your bonus action or your movement, of course. Uh, well, I, I, I do have a uh, bonus action, so... Uh... And a movement action. So I'm going to use my uh, movement action. Very good. If you look the cursor on the top left, you can drag your thing. And you can also uh, measure distance with the weird little circle with a ruler coming out. Yep, I'm, uh, I can't, uh, what I'm aiming to do is to get around the other side of the house to the door. Three on that I can see. I can't see the rest of the Oh, curious. Uh, that's strange. I'll have to figure out how to fix that. You can see it in the uh, the game one, so it's going to be one. It's going to get you to ride around the back so that I can't. I'll move as far as I can. I can move you there, and that would be around as far as you could get, because this is your door. I'm sorry about that. And that's my move action. Then as a bonus action, I have cunning action, which allows me to dash, disengage, or hide. Damn right you do. You going to keep dashing? <coughs> so I'm just going to dash around back into the room. I want to put him into a flanking situation for my hand-to-hand -hand combat friend here. <laughs> you can make it the exact right amount of distance to be right behind this person. Yeah, I kind of just want to trap him. Let my buddy finish him off here. Great. Uh, so that will be the end of your turn, and then we are going to go around to Christian. So you have a fantastic flanking opportunity if you would like it. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to take it. I uh, summon my long sword into my hand. You may have been, you know, run over, but they can't check hammer space when they're stripping you down. So get that hey. long sword out there. That's right. X blades, baby. So yeah, black scary log sword, and I'm gonna stick it right in his uh, body. Beautiful. Uh, he's looking in pretty rough situ in pretty rough shape. So if you want to make an attack roll with advantage, which you know, for the sake of making sure that everybody knows what that means, uh, rolling twice and taking the better dice result. Probably 
open this so I can look at the chat to see if anything uh, important happens while we're doing this. We're I don't know why that said zero successes. So what do you add to that five? Seven. That is oh, going to be advantage, so just you'll... a... You do roll yeah. twice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you may well do it. Because the five would be just a bit shy of getting you there. But... Oh, that's 2d12 equals, or one die, 20 equals 7. How about 16? 16's going to class you, or is going to pass it with just a little bit extra to roll over. So why don't you roll me some good, sweet, sweet damage? All right. that many 10 damage is a hell of a lot and after you run that sword into them you can tell that they are in horrible condition probably uh, uh, uh and... the one the one counts as a three i'm sorry that's more oh you got that that beautiful great weapon great fighting. weapon fighter yeah well that is in fact going to be one over what you would need to incapacitate them so you can see these other two adventurers have crumpled to the ground and are currently lying there motionless as they are not quite dead. They're breathing a little bit, but uh, certainly bleeding out. They're not fighting today anymore. Correct. Oh, the poor buggers. <clears throat> what did they have? It looks like they had that carpenter's hammer that uh, you found or that you saw on the dwarf earlier. And the other one seemed to also have a short bow on their person. As well right. as a handful of other daggers, probably three more that they found. They look like wood carving knives, but a little oversized, so they would probably be big enough to use as daggers proper. I'll, I'll grab a couple of those and the bow with arrows. Perfect. Sounds good. You love to see it. And there's going to be 20 more arrows, and you are easily able to reclaim the ones that you shot. Those were both solid hits, so they did not shatter or break anything on their way into those bodies. Hooray! I'm going to want to use those wood carving tools you found and carve myself a focus so I can cast spells. I, uh, Absolutely. I hand them to you. Just I am me... not... Oh, go on. So just give me a few minutes to carve up a... Uh... Focus. I nod and I go watch the door. Absolutely. What's this little arcane focus or holy symbol or whatnot look like when you are done Our with it? A grinning skull. Beautiful. Yeah. You can roll if you want to. You can get something acceptable anyway, but if you want to roll... Uh, dexterity untrained, then you can see just how nice it is. Okay, I'll do that. Just for fun. Just for fun. It's really bad. It is recognizable. And obviously whatever entity or power or thing within yourself, even if that is just your own willpower that you are beseeching for power, recognizes that that is supposed to be a grinning skull. Excellent. No one else uh, will. That's okay. Uh, when he is done, I will uh, make myself one as well. I will watch the door while he does so. Beautiful. If you would like to roll an untrained dexterity check, just to see how nice it is and to see what it looks like. Might as well. Just for fun. See what happens. Okay. They'll come out to uh, aim. Yours looks much, much more like, well, uh, whatever it is you're trying to make it look like. So it's a raven. So kind? Okay. It's a pretty competent uh, carved raven you got right there in your hand. I carve flesh, not wood. Oh, okay. You made it out of meat? 
No, I mean, that's why I, mine's so bad. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I nod at him. <laughs> so you both have your little pieces of power. And... Yeah, dead, we should take a minute and ransack this house, see if there's anything else of use in it. Yeah, absolutely. If you would both like to roll investigation checks yet again, now that you are not under any sort of pressure. Um, I'm looking for anything of use at this point. Beautiful. So, James, you have a 16, looks like to me. Yep. (laughs) And that is a... Shit. That's how it goes. Uh, Christian, you're not actually particularly able to make out anything useful. You do find what looks to be some bread continuing to dig through the kitchen, but it has obviously borderline petrified after being here for a few, uh, maybe decades at this point. This is a woodcutter's lodge. There's got to be an accent here for the woodcutter. So what I found was an artisan cracker. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A, this is a, a, a crouton. Yeah, you eat it because it literally can't get any worse. Yeah. Yeah. But, James, you are able to actually find what looks to be a, excuse me, I believe it is War Axe in 5e that is the one that you can use with one or two hands. Let me double check. That's not the one. Weapons. Double check. Uh, you do find a woodcutter's axe and what looks to be a pair of old textile armor underneath the bed as you, you know, pull the old moth bitten sheet, sheet up. Textile you find, armor. That's great. Yeah. Two gambesons, which will both function as studded leather, so that will be 12 plus your uh, dexterity. They're a little stinky, but they're in good enough condition that they'll work. It looks like this place was relatively well sealed. And the moths got to the sheets, but they didn't quite get as far as the armor itself. And those are both light armor that if you are proficient with, you will be trained in. Here, take a suit of this uh, armor and uh, take this axe. You might be able to, to throw it or something. I take the axe. Beautiful. Uh, it is a battle axe, so it does. It is a martial melee weapon. It does one dice eight slashing with one die ten versatile. And said it's, it is a woodcutter's axe. It is, you know, in theory a little more unwieldy to use in battle, but it's got a lot of weight in the end, so you can actually properly cut shit with it. Nice. That'll be useful. It'd be good. I'm going to look for any kind of container that might be able to hold water. We're going to need to have stuff to drink and eat while we're stuck out here. Absolutely. I hold up the giant crouton of doom. I mean, if we get hungry, I guess it's better than nothing. Uh, somebody roll me a wisdom or an intelligence check. Wisdom it is. Beautiful. Not not doing so hot today. That seems like a good idea. That thing will probably hold... I mean, it's so hard. Why wouldn't it hold water? Come on. I was, yeah, I was keeping it as a weapon. <laughs> oh, okay. A club. Okay. Uh, you are probably able to figure something. <laughs> it's, it's not pretty, but the leather boots that those two people that you just took out are proper leather and are going to be waterproof, if not at least water resistant. I'll take them. You got the boots? You got two pairs of leather boots? Better than nothing. It is better than nothing. I do like it better than being nude. Yeah. So it's probably around 10 in the morning. All right, we got plenty of time then. You have plenty of time. 
you know that your destination is towards the center of town to the keep of Stonebridge, or Rock Bridge, rather. And if you pop your heads out, you can tell through the trees just a bit, you can see the keep at the top of that tall, tall hill. But base estimates are telling you it's probably a few days away. We better get moving, then. We don't have a lot of time. I nod sagely and follow him. Beautiful. So, you will both be traveling through the woods to see what you can, you know, what you're doing. Could I get the both of you to make survival checks to see if you can come across anything that is properly edible? Whether it is small game, uh, wild fruit, something like that. We got an 11 from James. And also, I will apologize. My uh, room is dark. I have one lamp in it, and it is approximately 15 feet away from me. You know, got to keep that mood lighting going for all of the uh, sadness. I don't know. This is for sadness. This is for sadness. And so it's, is my beautiful this, this goblin. This for happiness. Right? right, yeah, yeah, of course. And this is just, you know, one. Uh, I rolled an 18 on that survival check. Beautiful. You actually come in contact with, on the way, seeing a couple of small berry bushes that you're relatively, relatively confident should be non-poisonous and should be edible. And at this point, you know, you only have so many options ahead of you. Um, yeah. yeah. And you notice in front of you what looks to be relatively fresh deer tracks. Not very big, but definitely wild game. I'd love to, but I don't think we have the time to stick around and do hunting. We're a few days away, right? Yeah, and we only have a few days before this thing's over. The information, you know, just to reiterate, the information that you were given is that whoever gets to the portal at the center of town in the keep wins. And uh, if I can get some insight checks from both of you... I have that skill. Yeah, or history, possibly. But again, I'm rolling three on everything today. That's unfortunate. Uh, James, were you ruling insight or history? Insight. You know that this is a broadcasted entertainment thing, and you're relatively certain that if somebody just in the first day or two got straight to the keep and got straight in there, that would be bad TV, and it would also be bad TV if every or if like a handful of people just or if a large amount of people just starved in the first day so you're relatively confident that based on the fact that this is a broadcasted entertainment situation you are probably safe to stop and hunt for a little while that makes sense what do you think the deer went that way <laughs> I suppose that means we should try to track it, I guess. It'll at the very worst lead us to a source of fresh water. Man has a point. Let's do it. Does have a point. Beautiful. So I am going to maintain Christian's 18 on survival for that. Can I get the both of you to make stealth checks to make yeah, sure absolutely. that as you are tracking it, you will not be noticed by the deer? That's a big number. That is a big number. Dang! 26 from James. Or, excuse me, from the father. Now, I can't... 
I can't get that if I roll a 20. I got a 17, though. I'm feeling good about it. 17 is really good. Let me see if I can find that. There is, in fact, a deer under monsters, and the passive perception is well low of 17, so you two are able to relatively quickly. Those tracks ended up actually being a little fresher than you thought by your first estimation, and it's only about 20-minute detour until you see this deer laying its head down, currently alone, again, a little smaller, without any antlers, because... It doesn't seem to have any. Yeah. Doughy's um, just fuck. Yeah. It's, uh, if I, Ethan, remember correctly, deer only have antlers depending on the time of the year, so I'm going to say it's not the right time of the year for that. And then if I'm wrong, this is a fantasy world where I make all the rules, so it's not the right time of year for that. They lose them and then regrow them. All the great. Do. And does don't have them at all. So only male deer have antlers. Cool good to know that i was correct uh so you see that deer which you with again that beautiful beautiful 18 in survival you're relatively certain is a male deer but it is a little smaller and it is not the right time of year for it to have any antlers currently we should both try and take a shot at that thing if we both draw back at the same time if one of us misses the other one might hit what do you think I mean, all right, right. Let's let him have it. Which, uh, I believe we have advantage on the attack roll, so our chances. Yes, are- that is correct. You will both have advantage due to the fact that you are currently not something that the deer is aware of. I'm right, using Eldritch on- Blast. Ooh, beautiful! Yeah. So that's going to be a charisma-based attack roll. I will take the seventeen on mine. Beautiful. Pull that back up. Remind myself how many hit points that a deer has, which is, not, uh, strangely enough, not a lot. <laughs> weird. That's so weird how that works, isn't it? Yeah. God, I'm rolling like such crap today. You do have advantage. Oh, so You good. can take it again. Thank you. You're welcome. I have terrible dice karma when I'm playing online. I, I have good ones when I'm rolling dice. Ooh, Ooh, that's a lot better. Ooh. Yeah, if the both of you want to roll damage. Uh, James, yeah. what's your dexterity modifier for this bow damage? Four. Uh, great, it dies. You don't have, you, neither of you have to roll. A deer has four hit points. Oh, well, that, and I was also going to add that uh, if they're surprised, again, it's uh, automatically a critical hit. Right, and you get all of your sneak attack damage, and that is critical. Uh, So, between the two of you, that thing is... Very dead. uh, Dare I say, dead as hell. You both manage to, from opposite sides of the deer, get direct heart shots. So there's this weird... If you could bisect the deer, you would see this weird X-shaped pattern of hole through the entire carcass of the thing. It's truly beautiful in a way that only makes sense in a role-playing game. So what are you going to do? So you have a deer, and you hear, uh, if maybe, maybe you hear, if you would both be so kind as to make me perception checks. I can do that. I like that you keep asking for the skills that I have. Uh, Well, you happen to build... A character with the right kind of skills for a vague wilderness survival game. Perception and stealth are the skills I have expertise in. Very nice. Ooh. Ooh. 25 from James. So James is going to notice what is hip-hop happening here. Please excuse me. I'm leaning out of frame. And again, I rolled a two. So Christian, you do not notice, but James, you hear relatively quiet the sound of something it's it's somewhere between where a wolf or a domesticated dog is kind of yapping and making sounds in a way that sort of communicates to 
be similar to human or humanoid speech, and somewhere between actual genuine human to humanoid speech. Some kind of critter talking. Some kind of critter's talking. So, if I could get the two of you to make initiative checks, because we are not going into another combat encounter, but we are going into something that I love that I think Christian doesn't like, which is skill challenges. But it doesn't matter, because I make all the rules. Oh, I got a Christian roll. And, he and got I a got a roll. James roll. Ooh. <laughs> Thankfully, you're only rolling this in front of one and or in comparison to one another, so it could be worse. So, uh, what did we both get? I got an 11. I got a 21. Great. So, I will lay out the rules for this skill challenge. The way it works is that the two of you are going to choose skills that you are proficient in and attempt to make a roll against a set DC that I have chosen. Between the two of you, you have to get six successes before you get three failures in order to succeed at this skill challenge. You won't both automatically die or anything like that, but if you succeed at this skill challenge, you will completely avoid some sort of negative consequence. So the way this is going to work is you will pick skill. Say you want to roll deception because you want to toss something that you have in your person, reach down, grab a rock, toss it in the other direction to make somebody who is following you run the other way because they heard a sound from the other direction. That would be totally acceptable. You can roll history to try and figure out where you are in the world, maybe a bit of the landscape. You could roll religion to see if there's any lore in what you practice based on how to deal with this sort of situation. Whatever skill you have proficiency in, you can make an attempt to succeed at it. You can only use each skill once uh, per success, so you can keep trying, say, athletics to just outrun the thing over and over until one of you succeeds. What thing? Uh, whatever was talking something between a dog and a person. Hmm, I wonder what that is. You do not have the information, but you are both, since you both have relatively good uh, wisdom scores, I believe. Uh, you are probably... The easy way, I think I should start out with stealth, because if we can sneak away, it's better than anything else. Absolutely. <coughs> Great. Uh, I believe Christian is going first, but, you know, you've got tab on that. Christian, what would you like to do to deal with this situation? Pick a skill... Figure out how you are going to use it to help deal with this situation. You can be creative. You can make up things in the environment or surrounding you to help deal with this situation. Uh, I'm going to use insight to determine whether or not the voices are hostile toward us. Absolutely. Make an insight check. I like that a lot. Good plan. Oh, excuse me. God, I'm so blue. Just colors wise. And it's that plus seven, so 20. Hey, right. A right. 20 is going to more than pass the DC that I have set for you. Uh, so you listening in can tell just gauging it, basing your understanding of things that whatever you are talking to was probably following or tracking the deer that you two took out. No, oh, rival hunting creatures. Yes. And is now going to be hunting you because that deer has been taken out and you are encroaching, maybe encroaching on its territory or maybe you just pissed it off. Fair something enough. Something like that. Fair but enough. it is not happy with you. However, that will be a success, so you can take that moving forward. Going to James, what would you like to do? I'm going to use stealth, because if we can try and give it the slip, even for just a minute, that will give us a good head start, if nothing else. Absolutely. Fifteen altogether. 
Well, a 15 meets, so 15 <laughs> beats. You are able to slip into the underbrush and, you know, move through enough stinky things. Uh, you know, aromatic flowers, uh, a few oh, rotten perfect. corpses or bones that were left behind by presumably this hunting party uh, to track to mask your scent for just long enough that you were able to get a head start against these people. Or these, uh, not people, these things that are unhappy with your actions. And now we're going to go back to Christian. What skill would you like to use? And uh, what would survival. You like to survival okay. to figure out what kind of creatures they are. Absolutely. Uh, make that roll for me. Good man. Uh, so even with the plus five on that, I'm not going to make it. No, you are not. But I, even though this is not going to be a success, you will be able to tell that this is probably some sort of intelligent, relatively speaking, or intelligent in like a sapient sort of way, beastly creature. The, the the speech actually told me that. Yeah, but you, uh, based upon the way that they are tracking you and the way that you have been, you know, dealing with and trying to avoid them and the way that they have sort of adapted to that can tell you that this creature, well, definitely beastly in nature and drive, is, sapient. is genuinely sapient. And it has these sort of problems, problem-solving humanoid like brain processes that allow them to deal with this situation in a timely manner more complexly than a standard wire wild animal would and because he failed the survival he could still use the survival on his next turn right until he gets right. with it okay absolutely okay uh, well, my next best one I can use is perception, and I'm going to use that to try and figure out the path that they're taking to get us the most distance between their path and our path. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, I like that. I like that. Go ahead and roll. Whoa. Huh. Whoa. That's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good roll. That one. Yeah, 28 should pass the 15 mark. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you are relatively evil, evil, uh, relatively able to see going ahead also and seeing the way that they are. You are possibly relatively <laughs> evil, but that would be typecasting if I said it out loud. Uh, <laughs> you are relatively easily able to look forward to the path ahead and tell the ways that they have been tracking you based on the fact that they seem to be probably following the river, uh, given that the river and the road, which are the two things that you have sort of been running between to make sure that you're still heading in the right direction while you are escaping these creatures, uh, are the things that they are sort of following. They are keeping to this general avenue. You are able to see up ahead a relatively steep sort of lowish, like 30 foot cliff face. It's low, but it is that very steep, very sudden incline. Uh, but on top of that, you were able to see what looks like probably some sort of, sort of old hikers, maybe the same logger that you recently just ransacked the ancient house of, uh, path up this cliff to get up without staying on the road. So you were both able to relatively quickly and easily get up this path and get up on top of this short cliff face to get a little more lead on these creatures. Perfect. So that is, I believe, three successes and currently... One fail. One failure, yes. About to be two, though. Nah. Do you nah. know that? Do we it's know survival that? again. It could be nine. Nine plus... That's, yeah. Oh, that's, with the, that's with the plus. Yeah, that's with the plus. You put it in there. Uh, eh? I mean, they're probably animals. Yeah. Legal
legally defined as animals. Oh, Even though like... I've already determined two different ways that they are not. Yeah, I mean... I'm calling that a false positive. That, that makes them not animals. One more fail and uh, we are in trouble. One more fail and you are in trouble. Uh, so, goes back to James. Uh, yeah, I don't have on. nearly as high of a score to use on this one, but it's my next highest one. Here's my plan. I have the uh, acrobatic skill, and what I want to use with it is I figure we're in like trees and with some scattered rocks and stuff near this road. If I keep my path so it doesn't touch the ground by using my acrobatics, we're going to be harder to track. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that a lot. Let's give it that roll. Oh, and there's our third fail. So there is your third fail, and things are going to start looking a little grimmer. As you try and make this, you know, obviously a uh, very, very well thought out and very well kept plan uh, moving forward, you go to hop upon these rocks and sort of do a sick ass kickflip off of a tree and all that good business. And the rocks and the tree all go absolutely perfectly well. But one of the rocks that you are both sort of following this path onto and hopping upon, the moss is not gripping quite, quite as strongly as on the other rocks for some reason or another. Uh, and you both slip and fall into the underbrush. And as you poke your heads both up, you see what looks to be this approximately six feet off of the ground, poking their head in through this dark, dark forest towards you. Bestial canine head. And I'm going to take a brief moment because usually we do breaks on streams. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do have to pee. And it is roughly the halfway point. So I will be right back. And then we'll deal with this whole situation. All right, we'll call, we'll call it five then, okay, everybody? Be back Sounds like a good five. Be back.
Welcome back, everybody. We have returned after a brief break to the world of Crawl Royale. That's it. That's what I'm calling it. And it seems like my sound is cut out, but I hope that y'all can still hear me. Um, this whole situation is sort of set up like a Battle Royale sort of style situation where a bunch of adventurers have been dropped in pairs of two into a big old situation where they have to fight by tooth and nail with one another to get to the top of the mountain at the center of the town that they also have to find their way to. Uh, we met our current heroes, uh, whose names are, I have them written down, Brother Anahe, and uh, I d forgot to put down Christian's character's name, and I don't remember or if I got it. Barkley Knox. Barkley Knox. I'm editing it right now. Don't even worry about it. So, after getting dropped into the playing grounds in this mysterious sort of way, with, you know, magic that admittedly is not that mysterious and you're very comfortable with, uh, you found yourselves in front of a small logger's house with another pair of two people who you were quickly and easily able to dispatch. And then after that point, found your way over to the forest where you were hunting some game. Found a nice smaller deer, which was food, because all of the food back at that logging house was relatively rotted through. And after taking down the deer with a relatively clean shot, you found yourselves running off with some sort of pack of creatures at your heels relatively displeased and now you currently have to deal with that situation and i am setting up the map at this moment all right so as you find yourselves stopped as you have both, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, we just peeked our head out of some bushes. Cause we peeked our head out of some bushes after falling into the bushes. You see, I know have I have a. Uh, there we go. That'll do. Uh, after peeking your head out of some bushes that you very non pleasantly fell face first into. Uh, you notice what seems to be a large, bestial, canine head looking out and staring at you from that spooky, spooky, spooky business that is the underbrush. Uh, so, how do, how do you feel about that? I'm not particularly pleased by the concept. I'm not going to lie. Alarm. Alarmed is fair. I can't say I can argue with that. Zoom into this because I am setting up a map currently that is correct. There we go. That is at the right scale. Yes. There we go. And now I'm going to do the very spicy thing where I grab the players tab and I pull you over. To a completely oh. different tab. Treachery is this. Treachery is this. Uh, this is roughly where you, you know, to use slightly unfortunate parlance, uh, ate shit. And I will put your little, little scissors down after I properly get this thing situated. I apologize. Again, this is my first time running something using this software, uh, and I'm figuring it out. So I have to go there. I have to find this folder that I have, and I have to put this. Bow, bow. I guess I'll put that in there. That's good a place as any. And now, hold on. I know this is all very exciting. Uh, I got a I, thing that you I can't can barely even keep see. it together. <laughs> I know you're you're doing great, by the way. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. 
There we go. So we've got Brother Anahe, the <laughs> spooky man, who I have finally selected a picture for. Oh, ooh, I'm so excited. What, what am I going to look like? Oh, it's it's literally exactly what you said. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, can I get a, you know, a, a brief... Uh, what do you want your character to look like, Christian? Uh, <clears throat> I do need to differentiate it from the shenanigans that I will be throwing at you, as opposed to just a blue face. Uh, I, I, I pictured Elias from WWE. Oh, I like that. I like that. Not World War Three WWE. Right. <laughs> World Excuse War Three isn't until next year, silly. Yeah, come on. What am I doing? Uh, view image. <laughs> yeah, right now we can't do World War Three. Social distancing is kind of a problem for that. It's true. Like, it would be easy enough to shoot somebody else, but forming ranks and, you know, very tight exactly. closed CQC. Just doesn't work. This is not going to work. I mean, you can't stack up with six feet between each other. It's oh. just, it's truth. See, now I gotta close that. And then I gotta close that. And then I gotta go over here. And then I gotta hit edit. And then I gotta upload a token. And it's gonna be this one. Could this be any more exciting? It really could only be less exciting. I can't wait to see what it is that I look like. That's fair. You are saved. And your token is down. They are literally the two characters that you said they looked like. Uh, one of whom is a real person. And one of who is from previously hit and now out of vogue Game of Thrones. Uh, you can see, uh, if you would be so kind as to scroll up, whoever has control over the Skype Roll20 thing. Got them there. You've probably fallen. Uh... In the top right corner, there is a zoom out option uh, with a little scrolling bar. Yeah, so if you zoom that out, it'll be easier to find where things are. And I can actually, I can do a little, a little spooky oh, thing. There you are. I can shift ping. Yes, which you will can. Bring everyone's camera. So that's the two of you. I like it. Who have slipped off of this little hill because some of the moss on the rocks were a problem. something very very spooky so there are a few ways we can do this you can either since you have fallen it doesn't seem like it currently knows well, I think he just froze. Uh, I miss him already. Yes, he's frozen. We should start rolling dice. It might scare him. That's a good idea. Let's roll dice. Okay. <laughs> 1d20 plus 200 yeah I wanted to feel as though I was doing well on this roll I've been waiting to use the uh, combining the um, eyes of the grave with the assassinate attempt to do the times 4 damage so Ethan's internet has completely gone out. <laughs> He's rebooting it. I I think uh, Christian, I can attempt to entertain our fans for a few minutes. <laughs> all, all two or three of them that are probably still watching. 
Oh yeah, they were. They should have all gone by now. You would think. Yeah, I, I mean, think they uh, left us behind. <laughs> so, uh, how's uh, how's everybody doing out there in uh, in Chatland? I am. I'm kind of curious. Have you guys been playing games uh, on your computers too? And how is it going for you? Are you having the same kind of technical difficulties that we are? I am very curious to know. Yeah, that is a good question. We shall see, I suppose. This is, I think, next week is going to be 16 hours uh, of just doing live stream gaming. So I'm looking forward to that. Are we going to go back to doing some regular metaverse on Monday? Yeah. Yes, that'll be nice. That's got the last cast booked up, too. Oh, really? Who do we got this week? You, um, you... I, I'm going to tell him. I, I think we can tell him. I okay. Well, we've but... got Nessa coming in. You're going to be there. Yeah. Uh, Helen and Sarah and uh, all things depending. You know, uh, possibly uh, uh, scheduled Maggie, but, you know, things might work out with her uh, current employment situation to get in the way of that. But I'd really like her to be there. I'm sure she will if she can be. But I mean, yeah, we're all, all of all of you are going to be there. Going to be a five-person cast, and uh, going someplace you might be familiar with. You oh, know, I, don't know. I don't know about giving that away. That could be a uh, that's scary. Yep, might be familiar with it. You might have seen this place before. Oh, we got uh, look at that. We. We have someone on chat who plays a Fantasy Grounds game. Uh, I did that for a while. I am, as it turns out, just terrible at the Fantasy Grounds software. Maybe even worse than I am at the Roll20, even though I've only used the Roll20 twice now and the Fantasy Grounds software for about a year and a half. Uh, yeah. I have an easier time with Roll20 than Fantasy Grounds myself. I'm not going to lie. It's a little more intuitive, and being like I'm not very technical with computer stuff as it is already, and Fantasy Grounds <laughs> just makes me feel dumb for doing anything at all ever. Same. And uh, and I blame Fantasy Grounds for that in terms of my own ineptitude. I don't blame Fantasy Grounds, but I do blame Fantasy Grounds. <laughs> yeah, they're... Uh, they're saying it's a it's a it's a serious learning curve, and I uh, I actually picked up a few things while I did it. Like I can, I can do stuff on it now, but I don't like to still because it it, it there was so much pain involved in learning it. Uh, I've liked the the roll twenty quite a bit so far. The times we've used it. Oh yeah, well, when everything's loaded in the right way. Oh oh hey look who's oh, back. back. I'm back. I oh, I'm so tired of technical issues, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. We only started an hour late and then had a little brownout. It's it's nothing. It's not real. We scoot over, get better in frame. Well, so know, the, the brownout might be because everybody and their brother is on the internet. We usually uh, at this household have these problems anyway. But it had been three days, and we usually get a few of them a day. But it had been three days since we have had any issues that, at the very least, I have noticed. So I thought we were like cool, but it turns out we're not cool. So where the hell were we? Right, you guys slipped on some rocks, running away you from. You mentioned some that you're not sure if he saw, or we're not sure that he saw us. That that's as far as we got. Yes, whatever you saw, you're not sure that they have your exact whole situation laid down. Well, that's a start. And whereabouts did we see them? Because I see us on this map. They are currently... Excuse uh, me, at least that the is one the that we saw thing. poking out of the bush. It, they are definitely poking out the bush. They are currently up here above you. And I'm looking for a token type situation to use. I'm just but I started that... Rain. Yeah, I started that search sort of prefer, before... There we go. That's good. It's weirdly wide, but it'll work. Somewhere around here, above you. 
looking. Getting uh, really bad now. Yeah. Can I get the both of you to either make? Well, it could be any of nature, religion, or arcana to identify <coughs> this creature based on what you can see. I'll do arcana because I got that. I do not possess any of these skills, so I will roll one untrained. You love to hear it. Maybe you heard something from somebody who heard something. Five. I don't. I have no idea anything about this thing. Eleven. Well, an eleven is enough to tell you something about the fact that, uh, well, Barclay, you have heard a thing or two about people shifting into dogs and shifting back and sometimes getting stuck somewhere in between. You would know the name of Werewolf, and you would know that it's somebody who shifts from dog or shifts back or something like that, but, you know, you might only have so much actual genuine information. That's absolutely horrifying. Yeah. Could be a werewolf. Yeah. Uh, Brother Anna Hay, uh, that's that's definitely a dog snout, but it's a little tall off the ground, and that's just... That doesn't make any sense. It's just weird. That just does. That just don't seem right. It's just weird. That that's all it is. It's a it's a weird creature. Great. So, regardless of the decision you are making, can I get the both of you to make stealth checks, just to make sure that it does not immediately notice you while you are making this decision? Should be rolling on the screen any second now. It's thinking. It's telling me it's rolling the dice. It sometimes it takes a second. What can you do? We're working with a free program. Uh, oh, that was a plus five, thirteen. Great, you got a thirteen. You got a twelve. Let me. Those are not good rolls. Yeah, well, this is an active thing, so there is a chance that it could roll poorly. Let's see. Ooh. No, that's not. Like, gonna be that's not looking good. You see these things, canine snout, snap straight down and look at the both of you, and that's clearly not the thing I was looking at because I put all of you on the background layer and not on the tokens layer. So I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on the right one. So. You still have an opportunity to do something, but before anything else, this will, in fact, result in an initiative check. All right, let's do that. I'm for it. I should hope so. There we go. Let me elongate that weird dog man. Let me pull that back up. And that is still up, so that's quite easy. But now it needs to load. Okay. Oy, that is going to be a 20 for the wolf man. That beats both of us. Unfortunate. So, first on the initiative is going to be the wolf man. Uh, and they are going to do just some, you know, something just a, a little, a little spooky, for good measure. And they are going to gracefully hop down from that ledge, right on top of our good, our good, good brother Anahe, or Anahe. I know you said it, but it doesn't mean Anahe. I remember. It's Anahe. Nick. Anahe. Cool. Doing it right. Our good, good brother Anahe, and they are going to. Uh, try and attempt to possibly eviscerate and rip your intestines open with their claws. Uh, oh no! That's less than that. That's it's not great, and that is going to be only at a plus four to hit. So that's good. If it will go through and roll the dice, 
We shall see. There we go. Oh, so the first one is going to be 13. Is that going to meet your 12 plus dexterity? I assume no. not. And the second attack, which is going to be its uh, big ol' maw, which is also admittedly a little spooky. Going to be going for you. I'm a bit 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 by this strange creature. It probably has some kind of disease. Uh, th uh, there's you could say that in some way, and it's just giving me the roll for the rolling for dice prompt. So I'm just going to sit here and wait so that it will roll the dice because I currently don't have my dice on my person. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just secretly roll it again, and if they both show up, I'll do the first one. Oh, they great. finally came through. Second one went. Uh, great. Uh, so that is going to be a six, which is also not going to break your armor class. No, it so, isn't. That was, the, that was the standard action, and that was the movement action. So let me just double check and make sure it does not have anything particularly relevant to any of that good, good business. So... It is going to pass its turn on down to James. All right, let's see. You are under a big wolf man. It, you're not technically being grappled, but you are taking the same space because it did jump on you. Fair enough. I will use my, uh, let's see, let's start with the... Hmm, I don't like either of these options. I'm going to use my bonus action to disengage. Great. Absolutely. Using your cunning action rogue feature. It's a good yes. way to do it. So as soon as you move, you will no longer take any attacks of opportunity for moving. And let's move. I want to move someplace where I can get into cover. Great. Uh, there is a tree here that you can hide behind. Yep. Definitely going for that. Because I still have two actions left. The standard action that I want to use is to uh, channel divinity. Good. I'm going to give it the curse of the grave and mark its life force for termination. Uh, okay. What does that do exactly? Okay, the next time it takes damage from myself or an ally, it suffers double the damage and then that curse ends. Okay. I like that. Uh, that is hot. And I believe that is all three of your action types. So uh, I had disengage, and I had a, uh, which was a bonus action, and then a standard action for the uh, channel divinity. Yep, and then you moved behind to get to cover. Great. Uh, so going down onto Good Master Knox. Mark, what would you like to do? Well, uh, that werewolf is cursed. And now it is also hexed. There we go. Cursed and hexed. And I don't know what type of action that is. I believe, and that is using your uh, hex blade warlock. Is that is that the hex blade's cursed, or are you using the hex spell, which is different? Hex blade's cursed. Great. Hex blade's cursed is a bonus action, so you still have your standard and your movement. So you will get bonus damage. Although he's damage a big roll. boy, I am a technically adjacent to him, correct? Yes, you are adjacent. I expanded it to make it more appropriate to the size of the monster. I see. I would like to uh, whack him. Great. Make an attack roll. And I believe... And I would like that attack to smite him? Yeah, well, you get to make that choice after, after? it connects. Okay. I, this, so I spent, if you don't hit, you I don't waste it. I have never played a warlock or a paladin, so um, not really sure how this works. I haven't played a paladin, but I have played a warlock. Uh, do I get a bonus to hit him with the Hexblade's Curse? It's not uh, No, you do bonus not. Damage rolls against the cursed target. 
bonus to damage rolls, and if you roll a 19 on dice, as opposed to just a 20, that will also critical. Excellent. I did not. You did not. You can tell from that uh, that strike that you attempted to land that obviously you missed, but you were pretty close. It looks like this thing's armor class is actually not incredibly high. All right, and... uh... You do have your movement, but if you try to walk away, you will incur an attack of opportunity, I think. Yes. I was making sure that the Hexblade's curse did not disable attacks of opportunity. All right. No, it does not. Yeah. And um, I don't need my move action. I'm going to go toe-to-toe for a minute. Do it. Get this sucker. Oh, does uh does the curse man get to attack him with advantage? Uh, no, it does not. Darn. What can you do? Anyway, so uh, assuming that is the end of your turn, which I am going to assume, because yes. you've run out of things to do. Um, at this point, you can all hear the sound of wolves, and maybe. Other kinds of dogs oh, barking is... in the distance and following behind. This is just what we needed. Yeah. They're not here yet, but you can tell that they're getting slowly closer and closer. And yet we come no closer to answering the age-old question of who let them out. Who let them out? Who was it? The werewolf whom let the dogs out. So, the werewolf is going to turn on its heel and wheel around to take some swipes at Barclay Knox. Uh, And let me open that sheet back up again. And it is going to take two strikes. One for um, Bitems and one for Slashems. Slashems. Okay. The first one is going to be Slashing. Rolling one die 20 plus four, because uh, it does have a plus four to hit. I typed a per, uh, period instead of a slash, so that was... An automatic uh, miss? Uh, no, I just typed wrong. I'm <clears throat> sorry. It might uh, miss, though. Does a 13 meet your armor class with the armor you have been given? No. Great. So the slash misses, and then it goes in with its big, hungry jaws. Lovely. And that is doing the roll thing, so I'll roll it again. Going for the first one, because that is the rule I set up before, it rolled a natural one. Uh, So as it goes in to go for the bite, you are relatively easy, just for free, able to bop it on the nose as it overextends itself for this attack. And it falls face first on the ground. Oh. So it is currently prone. Excellent. And that will be the end of its turn. Moving over to James. Ranged attacks will be at disadvantage because it is currently prone and more than five feet away. I have a bonus action I'm going to use to dash to get to over here. Great. You moved with your bonus action. And while it's down on the ground, I'm going to hit it with uh, an Inflict Wounds melee spell attack. Great. Uh, absolutely. Take that uh, Take that spooky Which business. Is, uh, uh, I believe at advantage because he is currently flanked. He is both flanked and prone, but advantage does not stack. So you only get one. You only yep. get the one advantage. You can't roll more dice. Yep, just, uh, I'm guaranteeing I get advantage no matter what. Absolutely. Extenuating circumstances. Be damned. That's Roll your attack thing. for me. All right. Uh, that is not only going to easily clear through that armor class, that is going to critical so you can roll twice and use double your modifier. All right. Not only do I do that, but because he's cursed from the curse of the grave, he takes double damage from this attack. That is correct, because this is the first attack, so they will be taking four times damage from this attack. Which, here's the damage roll. He will take (laughs) uh, 108 points of damage. A fine red mist (laughs) appears 
where once the wolf man was. Uh, there's only so much I can do against that much damage. And that's just the way that it goes. Uh, so we're just gonna... Here, how do I... There's a thing here where I can put a big X on it, but I don't know how to do it. There we go. There's an exploding Wolfman. Yeah. 108 points of damage. You touch it, and you can immediately see this corrosive, almost dark energy moving through its veins, expanding out from the point at which you make contact. And then this thing just absolutely explodes, covering you all in meat and gore and bloody, bloody goo. Might have overdone that one. Sorry. Might have overdone it. But <laughs> thankfully, the loud noise, I'll just, I'm going to roll a little d20. Just to make sure. Yep, that is a six, which is under half, which is good for you. After the loud, squelching, popping noise of every fiber of this wolf person absolutely going ballistic rings out. Uh, it sounds like the other canines following this as sort of the pack leader are scampering off and want nothing to do with it again. <laughs> what can you do? So you have currently dealt with the wolf problem. I think that might be the most damage I've dealt in a single attack in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, that was really big. <laughs> that was absolutely horrifying. That was really big. So, you have dealt with the wolf problem, and you are more than free to continue moving on, and you can tell that you are making progress towards getting towards this tower. At this rate, with the amount of time you've traveled, it will probably take you two and a half days from now to get there. All right, we'll get moving. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. You love to see it. Uh, you are free to, <laughs> if you want to deal with the ethical quandary that is maybe cannibalism, Eat the werewolf. No, or you have the deer. You have the deer. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say that you were more than welcome to have the deer, but since you brought it up, then not not worried about it. You're more I was than thinking if you would have dropped the deer, it probably would have stopped chasing us and eating the deer anyway. Yeah, but... Uh, we're not we can deer assume the deer. Well, we fell down a hill. <laughs> yeah. Like a couple of assholes. <laughs> and then botched our self-checks. And had to fight the Wolfman. I think he exploded with that amount of damage. He did legitimately explode. So what exactly did you do to him? Uh, I cast a spell on him. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Because I was like... I was picturing you like trying to backstab him all assassin style, and that just wasn't I cast playing out 100% right in my head. I cast an Inflict Wound spell on him. Yeah. And, and uh, got a natural 20 on the touch attack. And because and he, he was, was double gray, cursed and flanked and, yeah. It was, it was a bad day to be a werewolf. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm It's a terrible night to have a curse. I just figured, you know, he was already cursed with being lycanthropy. I might as well curse him with death. And then... What's going to happen? Things happen. <laughs> Sometimes people explain. That's thing I can do to somebody. All right, so we travel. Onward. Beautiful. Onward. You travel onward, following the path, continuing forward. Uh, and you eventually find yourselves coming relatively close, just assuming you are following the road, whether you're on it or just staying close by, because it does seem to be heading relatively in the direction of the town, which makes sense, because it is the town. Uh, you come close and you see whether you were on the road, you see directly forward or whether you were in the trees, you can see peering through the underbrush, 
what seems to be a relatively small farmhouse situation. You can see a little bit of farmland surrounding it, but there is this large uh, what is this stone farmhouse brick house. situation. Yeah, uh, <laughs> with a strangely upkempt thatch roof with light peering out of the windows and from underneath the door. Someone's here. Do you think it's more competition? It's all more competition. I suppose you're right. Do you want to kill them now or wait till they go to sleep? Well, obviously wait till they go to sleep. All right, then. <laughs> I guess we could go look. Okay, we should go take a look. You're right. <laughs> so you're going up to take a look? Yes. Do you want to be nonchalant or do you want to sneak up? Oh, we absolutely want to sneak up. There's, we're, this is a death competition here. It is. Uh, as full far as we know, we're trying to murder everybody? Yeah, that, that's what I thought the rules were. The rule is be first and you can kill people. Uh, great, so if you two would both make me stealth rolls... I'm going to make, in total public view, a sweet saccharine little wisdom roll to notice you. That is a 15 from James. I got a 3 on my notice you check. And I still beat you somehow with my and 7. You still got it. I love it. As you two creep up on this farmhouse, you are easily able to peer into one of the windows and you see what seems to be uh, a relatively innocuous older woman wearing raggedy clothes that are obviously moth-worn and bitten through. That's not a competitor. And they're obviously much older, and they are sitting over what looks to be some sort of little fireplace, stirring a pot currently resting above it on a little spit. We'll just put the two of you over here so we can get just a little bit of visual information where you were peering in. And then... But obviously not a competitor. Not that. Well, if it is, where's her partner? That's the question. I mean, the clothes don't match. I guess maybe she could have changed, but I, that just doesn't seem like... She doesn't look like the, the type. She doesn't seem to be armed as easily as you can tell. Uh, then... Should we knock? Yeah, one of us should knock, and the other one should get ready to attack her in case she does to pull some crap right when she opens the door. I'll knock. All right. I'll set up to ambush her if she tries anything funny. Worth a shot. So you go up to knock uh -huh. and open the door. I'll just pop you over there because there's not necessarily anything going on. I just like to do it. Uh, you go up to knock and open the door. And Brother Anahe, you see the woman step up from their stewing pot over the fire and walk up from their little pool above this fireplace and go over to the door and open it. Yes? Uh, <clears throat> they open the door. And it seems to be probably human. You're not entirely sure how old. And that's about as much as you can tell. Beyond the, you know, curled gray hair pulled up into a tight bun behind and the tattered moth-eaten clothing. Uh, hello, ma'am. Hello. I don't often get visitors. Would you like to come in? I would very much like to come in. Oh, please. I have room. I have seats. I haven't sat in a while. I can tell. I'm, you know, I'll be honest. I'm not terribly stupid. I do know why you're here. It's the death match. I was going to come right out and say that. I, 
Yeah, they got their big game going on, and they picked my old little town situation to be the place where it is happening. And I, you know, I obviously have feelings about that, but there's literally nothing I can do about it. So what are you going to do? I, I, I don't know. Has this happened in this town before? No, 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 no. This is the first The first time. year, so this is your inaugural year for this event. Yeah, I mean, I'm new to it. I've watched it before. I've got the old, the old sending mirror locked away in the closet, but, you know, I didn't feel like watching it because I knew it was going to be here, so I didn't... Right, you're right. I guess actually that was stupid because then I could have known if somebody was sneaking up on my house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hindsight, though, right? It's always 2020. Wait a minute. You, you got in one of the sending mirrors? You could watch this? Whoa, who are you? <laughs> oh, that's my partner. We travel oh. in twos. Come in, window man. I mean, I knew you traveled in twos, but I didn't see the window man. <laughs> yeah, nobody sees me. That's the point. Right. Uh, please also come in. I have bear stew. Well, uh... I'd love some of your stew. We've got some beer here, too. You can uh, add some of that to your larder if you want to cook it up. Well, I'm giving you the stew as a gift, so if you want to give me the deer as a gift, then that's I'll fine, but this isn't a trade. And, and I'll, uh, I'll give you this pair of boots I've been carrying around, because I don't need an extra pair. I do like boots. This looks Not like... Boots. Not too Good. terrible, huh? No, 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 no. That's just fine. That is just... have an ascending mirror, so you could watch what's happening, as in the other competitors. Uh, yes, uh, roughly speaking. You know, I like to have a good time. But I haven't uh, been watching this year because, admittedly, um, it was... I don't, a... like, I, I don't like to look poorer than I am, and I know I look really poor. Well, but just to be completely watch. clear, I've recently had some things uh, ransacked. Well, you don't have to watch, but uh, could, could we get a look at that sanding mirror? Yeah. Yeah, all right. And she goes over towards uh, this little closet in the corner and pulls out this large about four by two foot mirror. It looks like it's made of silver. It's very, very corroded at this point. It looks like it's been around. She obviously hasn't gotten a new one since whatever situation led this whole area to being mostly deserted. Anything you oh, yours! Uh, I don't know about the image quality, but you're free to take a look. Anything you can tell us about the tower at the top of the hill? Oh, it's, you know, it's where the mayor slash baron, the mayor and, no, that sounds stupid. I don't know what he used to be called. It's been, it's been about 50 years since this whole place went to shit. I'll be completely honest. But, I know a way in. That's great news. And it's not going to be the same way in that every, you know, everybody's going to be taking the big gates. With the big bridges and the signs that point to them. But I uh, may or may not be aware of a second separate entrance to the town proper. If you're uh, interested. I am interested. He is interested. I like that you're interested. Of course, unlike the stew, this will have to be a trade proper. Are you willing to do me a favor? You can say yes after I explain the favor, but I would like to know if you're willing to do any favor in the first place before I offer, because then it would be stupid if I did. If it doesn't take us too far out of the way, I don't have a problem with it. Oh, no, it's just uh, it's like two hours travel. And you'll be having a leg up because you won't be meeting a bajillion other members of this little dumb game that you're stuck playing. A minute. Is it yes. Julian? No, there's uh, doing some math. Thirty-eight other members. Well, let's uh, take a peek here at the sending unit and see what they're up to. What do you say, bud? Oh, I suppose right. you take a look. 
Clear it up against the wardrobe over there. That'll while be... you explain the favor. Yes. Watch this while you explain the favor. Mm-hmm. So you take a look into this mirror as this person is explaining, and I cannot uh, describe both at the same time. Otherwise, what? that would be very confusing. You whack! <laughs> I'm sorry! I'm trying my best! Uh, I should have pre-recorded the other thing so I could have played it while I described the other thing. That would have been good. It would have been terrible, actually. Uh, either way, you look into this mirror and you can see there are a few other groups who seem to be making relatively good, you can guess, similar time. Because you have actually noticed up to this point that it looks like the the forestry, especially after you dealt with the little werewolf problem, uh, the sort of forest has been thinning and gradually changing into farmland proper as you got closer and closer to the city that this tower, this uh, this fort you're supposed to get into is built around, or built within. And based on the sort of geography, you can tell that there are a handful of other groups that are making relatively similar to relatively good progress uh, compared to you. But as you look out the door and you look through the sending mirror, you can tell that night is starting to fall and people are going to start having to turn in because, you know, if night you get tired, you get sloppy. And if you get sloppy in a death match, you get yeah. killed. Yeah, sloppily. So there are some people starting to scout and look for camps. Uh, there are some people who seem to be pushing on whether wise or unwise and there are some people who going through the sending mirror because you can only actually see what is being actively broadcast yeah. by the big quotes network mm -hmm. that is running this picture in picture mirror yet no <laughs> or at the very least <laughs> they're not using it at this moment as they're just kind of skipping through seeing how people are doing um you I'm can tell that pairs are full pairs anymore not all the pairs are full pairs. There are some singular people who have been killed off. And you can tell that there seem to be some groups that are at odds with one another. And whether that's because they didn't come into this together or whether they didn't actually just get along as well as they thought they were going to. You're not sure. But looking through the amount of people, there is a death count as the sun starts to fade beyond the horizon and it seems like 12 people have died in this first day that's not bad yeah so the only uh let's see That'd 20 teams yeah there are 20 teams of two 20 so teams. there are 40 oh. total people so there's going to be 36 other individuals who are currently alive and dealing with this problem how many are dead? 12 people are dead. There are 20 teams of two, so there are going to be 36 other than you people currently alive. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. If there's 20 total teams, then there's 40, and then 12 dead makes 28. 28. Or 28. Oh, no, excuse me, you're right. I'm doing my math bad. because I was right, there are 26 other people than us out there. Yeah, 26 other people. I said 36, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Not I had the right number visualized. Pairs. I'm just going to say the wrong one for fun. 26 out there and not all of them are matched pairs. I like our odds. Indeed. And, so you know, I. the old woman's going to pipe over your shoulder and say, well, you know, I mean, there's certainly... Uh, the death rate's going to get higher over the next few days because the circle's essentially... All right. Our town is vaguely, vaguely in, like, circles getting bigger and bigger there is the tower and then there's the city proper and then there's the farmland and the outskirts which we're currently in obviously the radii or the the diameter of these circles circles is going to get smaller and smaller which is going to lead to more and more people running into one another one another so killing each other absolutely because everybody wants to be first uh big money and also your freedom Oh, speaking of your favorite, it wasn't uh, to deal with a werewolf in the area. If it did, we already did that. Oh, no, but thank you, actually. I was going to deal with that tomorrow. Uh, 
Probably. Or die. Because it keeps being a problem. Yeah, he, but this he, actually... He, sorry, come again. He exploded in the woods. Oh. That's... Something. Huh. <laughs> well, either way. There is something that I am going to ask you to deal with. All right. It is a different creature that has been giving me trouble with my livestock, which also, thank you for the werewolf. This one is going to be probably more of a problem than the werewolf was. Okay. What are we talking There is a giant of some sort in the nearby area. He's been living here almost as long as I have. And we've always sort of avoided each other, but he's, he's taken my cat. So you I need that cat. Get your cow back. I need my cow back. I, I'm I'm recruiting you to cow heist. Barkley, you think that's worth it for this uh, secret entrance into the tower? Yes. All right. You heard the man. And there's, right. You know, there's going to be other things that the giant took. Giant sometimes have hordes. Hey, they steal in. things. And they're probably looking at your sending mirror. Uh, I don't know. Giants kill people. So that giant probably has killed at least one other group of adventurers. So there might be some things. equipment worth having. And also this place is relatively abandoned. So he's probably gone through and figured out some situations. To And I assume uh, they didn't plant the giant for the contest? No, no, no. The giant lives here. There are definitely some enemies that were planted. Then it uh, has killed usually... many. Yeah. If it lives here, it's killed a lot. Yeah, that giant's definitely killed some people. We were cool because I traded, like, cheese. Uh, but when, you know... Obviously, the town stopped happening. I've started running low on crops. Uh, I've started being able to provide less cows. Some of my cows died. I have the one left. That's only so much cheese, and giants need a lot of cheese. So okay. he got mad, and he stole my cow. If you give him back, I'll bring you into the town. You know, I've never killed a giant before. Sounds like fun. It does, doesn't it? All right, well, I mean, uh, make yourself comfortable. You can sit down in this living room area, if you like, I uh, suppose. Judging by the fending, you know, we're going to sleep better than anybody else. Oh, yeah. Looks like there's rain coming, and you're not going to get rained on. Great, let's hunker down and do a short rest here before we get moving. Absolutely. Or well, it's nighttime, so we might be doing a long rest. Oh, let's do a long rest, then. Totally up to you. But, either way... We will pick up after we finish with that shorter, long rest uh, next week, because I think this is a good place to call it for tonight. Sounds good. Uh, this has been fun, and hopefully next week we won't have as many uh, technical, technical difficulties that led to us being, what, like an hour late? Something like that? Who knows? A little over. Yeah. Little sorry, over. Guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. I haven't used uh, this program that we're using to talk in a long time, and it was mad about it. I understand. Yeah. I had but, a lot of problems the first time, too. Absolutely. But I think uh, next week on uh, Friday, which is what it currently is, we should probably have a much better crisp 6 p.m. start time, which also means we will have a longer session. Uh, I hope you'll all come back for the second and presumably further episodes of Crawl Royale, and I will pass it back over to my cohorts to talk about the other shows that maybe they want to plug or anything else they want to plug. Well, you know, I, I did a little spoiler. We got uh, Metaverse coming on Monday, and we're coming back to uh, full regular episodes for the uh, new season. Woo woo! Uh, Dreams and Nightmares is going to be starting. I'm not telling you where you're headed, but uh, you've seen it before. <laughs> I think they've got a great game on Tuesday. I know they did a one shot last Tuesday that I was I was sad that I missed. They did, uh, or it might have been Wednesday. I, I might have gotten my days mixed. They did a He Man and the Masters of the Universe game. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, they're alternating with Demon Hunters. Oh. Uh, I'm, trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get on it. That's beautiful. 
I would really, really like to be in the Heat Man game. Uh, I'll put your, I'll throw your name in the hat. Yeah, I like, I like that action. Yeah. Then when uh, I'm moving into Thursday, so we've had all kinds of great guests and more guests in it. Um, they're guests from the movies that they're writing, so it's a kind of like respect. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. And uh, then we've got uh, the Odies do Wednesday, and they really fun stuff like it's a Mario Kart on Wednesday, the family. Oh, that's so cute. That's yeah. adorable. It, it was pretty great. And there's a going on on that day. Yep. I mean, it's, uh, it would be a schedule and a little bit of break if you were locked in your houses or forced to work quickly or, you know, just kept from doing fun activities. We, we don't want your mind. Yeah. Uh, sanity and artistry is the most important thing that we all have access to right now. So we got to look out for each other and do things to keep each other entertained because that's what all this shit's about anyway. Mm hmm. Yeah, sorry about any of the connection and stream issues tonight. Hopefully, that'll be worked out next week. We'll get yeah. Cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah. Of existence. So I'll uh, work on that, I guess. Yeah. It's a good idea. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is. I'll figure. All it right. Out. Yeah. Well. Good night. Thanks for playing. Uh, I'm gonna go have dinner. Have a good night. Stay safe. Stay home if you can. You just...